Good morning. And welcome to this service of worship at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Tucson. My name is Thomas Gregg, and I will be your worship associate this morning. Our community is striving to become as varied as the blooms of the Sonoran Desert. Whoever you are, whoever you have been, and whoever you are becoming, I invite you to bring your whole self here now. We no longer require that masks be worn in worship or in concurrent religious education. If you're feeling sick, we encourage you to join us from home on YouTube. Based on our last poll, UUCT members are committed to being fully vaccinated and boosted. For all of our sakes, especially those most vulnerable, please, let's maintain that commitment. I, I extend a special welcome to visitors and invite you to fill out a guest information card, which are located in the Welcome Center to your left, and behind you, uh, and in the newcomer section of our website. We will meet for social hour after the service right here in Goddard. There will be coffee, iced tea, lemonade, and some snacks, and of course, good company. If you need to use the bathroom, there are two gender-inclusive bathrooms through the door to your left, down the hallway, and first left. We have two announcements. All are welcome to join us for a mission and vision workshop next Saturday, November 11th, from 1 to 4 p.m. in this room. If you're interested in and committed to the future of UUCT, join us as we dream about our future. And next Sunday, November 12th, we will have a workshop on Sunday morning from 10.30 to 11.30. After a short worship service, we will get to work and have a goal of packing 600 snack bags for asylum seekers who travel through the inn at Casa Alitas. Join us for workshop next Sunday at the regular worship time.
Good morning. Those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Reverend Bethany Russell Lowe, and I am minister of this wonderful congregation. When you came in, there should be either on your table or on your seat or in your email, if you're joining us from YouTube, it should be in this morning's email, um, uh, propose, something that's titled Proposed Revisions to Article 2. These are Article 2 of the UUAs, our denominational bylaws. I would like to read to you, so these are, we'll talk about this a lot in this service, and actually we're going to ask you to literally talk about it with each other later in the service. But as our call to worship this morning, to contextualize ourselves in why we are doing what we are doing, reconsidering our denomination's purposes, I'd like to read you the Article 2 from the UUA's bylaws when the denomination was founded in 1961. Here is the Article 2 from those initial bylaws, 1961. They've been updated once since. In accordance with these corporate purposes, the members of the Unitarian Universalist Association dedicated to the principles of a free faith unite in seeking. It's pretty good so far. I could get on so far. Unite in seeking to strengthen one another in a free and discerned search for truth as the foundation of our religious fellowship. To cherish and spread the universal truths taught by the great prophets and teachers of humanity in every age and tradition, immemorably summarized in the Judeo-Christian heritage as love to God and love to man. Hey, okay. <laughs> to affirm, defend, and promote the supreme worth of every human personality, the dignity of man, and the use of the democratic method in human relationships. <laughs> to implement our vision of one world by striving for a world community founded on the ideals of brotherhood, justice, and peace. To serve the needs of member churches and fellowships, to organize new churches and fellowships, and to extend and strengthen liberal religion. All right, I'm back on course. <laughs> to encourage cooperation with men, thank you, of goodwill in every land. Is that who we are today? No. Even if we put the sexist language aside, this is not the way we describe ourselves. I don't hear the words that we use in our day to day reflected in these words completely. Article two was amended in 1985 to become the principles and sources as many of us know them today. The language from the seven principles and six sources has inspired us and grown us for many, many years. And many people feel that today it does not reflect the fullness of who we are. So we are again being asked to consider revising and renewing our Article 2, which is a governance term, but it is also our religious, our faith's values. These are the values which will guide us into the future, reflecting necessarily not who we are today, but who we want to become tomorrow. Later in the service, we will invite you to move from your seats and gather around tables where you can discuss the different values held within Article 2 in small groups. We are inviting you into this conversation in the space of worship because this too is work that is worthy of our collective attention. Oh, and I printed 10 copies. If you were like, if you heard the 1961 principles, you were like, what came before that though? I think there are about 10 of you who might have that question. So here's some um, older Unitarian Universalist and Unitarian Universalist state belief statements. I'm gonna leave them right here next to the pulpit. If I run out, tell me, and I've underestimated us. Please join me now in saying our words of chalice lighting from Pat Uribe Lichti. Our chalice is a reminder that in hard times, our ancestors in faith acted with courage to bring hope and safety, to bring life itself to threatened people. We light it today as a reminder of who we are called to be in a world still dangerous and despairing. With courage and faith, we bring ourselves to the work before us. 
If you are joining us on YouTube and have a chalice or candle nearby, please light it now as we light our chalice here in Goddard. And would you respond in song by standing as you are willing in body or spirit to sing Meek Channels for the Strings of Love. The words will be on the screen. You can also pick up a gray hymnal if you prefer to sing along from the music. Um, it, they're by the, often by the door or by the piano. <coughs> Our earth is strong. It can hold our pain and our joy, our love and our anger. Our shared bowl, which we use for joys and sorrows each week, is strong enough to hold the big rocks, our collective celebrations and mornings, and also the smaller stones that will be added to signify our individual joys and sorrows. Let us remember the desert people who came first to this place, we honor the Hohokam, the Yavapai, the Tohono O'odham, and the Yaki, and the people who no longer exist as tribal entities here in Arizona. We who live in the desert know that water is a life-sustaining and scarce resource. Let's remember those who are walking through our desert right now without access to water. We also bring to mind those who are seeking to assure greater access to water in the desert. We pour water from a plastic jug, similar to the ones used by our ministry partner, No More Deaths. If you have a joy or sorrow to share, I invite you to go to menti.com and put in the code 34837323. If any of you here in the sanctuary wish to put your thoughts up in Menti, uh, Brian Moon at the table over there um, can help you do that. If you're here in person, I invite you to come up to the table and create ripples of hope by putting a stone into the water to symbolize your joy or sorrow. Please form a line down the middle aisle and return to your seats utilizing the outside aisles.
We have a few mentee responses this morning, which I will read. It was a joy working with others on our church home yesterday. Yes, thanks to you and everyone who was at our work day yesterday. Grateful for patience when I find it. Amen, friend. Keening sorrow for the acts of violence so common across our planet. Yes. Joy, I was promoted to a new job Monday. Yay! And sorrow, I was laid off Wednesday along with hundreds of others. Weird week. Oh, friend. I have a lot of thoughts for your employer, but <laughs> not here, not now. Please join me in a spirit of meditation or a prayer or contemplation, whatever that looks like and feels like for you and your body. And I will offer some centering words from John Corrado. He writes, here we are, children at the big party, having our moment in the sun, our piece of the action, till our bodies give way and we are called home. We are one big, not always happy family. Given life and breath by an eternal parent we dearly long to know. Now we have our one shot at it. Our one time to be a conscious part of this ongoing thing. It's not a free and easy trip. We have to live with pain as well as pleasure temptation as well as promise, loneliness as well as love, fear as well as hope. We have to live inside a coat of skin, wrapped up in drives difficult to control and dreams difficult to achieve. And though we are the guests of honor, we don't get to set the time of the party or its place nor are we consulted about the guest list. This is our time, and there really is just one question. What are we going to do with it? Please respond in song. VR is a religion. The words will be on the screen, and we'll sing through it twice. It's short. Sing it prayerfully. And hear people say that they connect with Unitarian Universalism because we are a like-minded people. Anyone ever said that or heard that? A few of us are guilty. And that feels true. But we are also a people who celebrate freedom of belief and the tension between ideas, the not-so-likeness of our thoughts. So Reverend Michael Slack, a Unitarian Universalist minister, encourages, to, encourages us to become like-hearted not like-minded, like-hearted, not like-minded. Like-hearted people are those who align their values with one another, those who lift each other up and seek equity and compassion in human relationships. 
In a moment, we are going to send you forth to have discussions about the different values held within this proposed Article 2, or if you prefer, at some of the tables up front, to get creative and draw and create and do what you do um, in your processing of the values. This is a way, and a way, as a way of inviting us into those conversations, into that creativity, we are going to watch a message from our Unitarian Universalist Association president, Reverend Dr. Sophia Betancourt. She was elected just this summer, and she is, if you are a Unitarian Universalist, she is your president too, and she's pretty cool. She's inviting us in this message that she sent a few weeks ago to consider the proposed changes to Article 2 and a few other cultural change, a, a, a bit more cultural change work that she has been called to the presidency to do. Let's take a listen. Beloveds, it brings me great joy to welcome you into this season of return when we celebrate in gatherings and come back to each other in our congregations and our communities writ large. For me personally, this is a time of return to our Unitarian Universalist Association, and I am humbled by your trust in me as your president. Thank you for the love and support you have shown me, not just during last year's presidential campaign, but during General Assembly in Pittsburgh. Thank you, you use. We are at the start of our shared ministry together, and we have been invited to consider a whole new way of visioning and resourcing our UUA. Our Commission on Institutional Change has invited us into a type of collaboration that we have not yet fully envisioned. This is work that I cannot do without you, certainly work that I cannot do without our remarkable UUA staff, and I am looking forward to all that we will accomplish together. Beloveds, this is a time to think about and reflect on the call of Unitarian Universalism in these days. Who are we meant to be collectively? And how do we care for one another along the way? In this coming year, once again, we get to lean into our shared values and talk about and discuss and chew on how we express those together as we come back to the next year of work on Article 2. More than just bylaws, however, it matters how we story ourselves into being. Those messages will guide us in our work to come. In this year, we are responding to the call of justice in our nation and around the globe. Beloveds, I know these are difficult times. I know that we are sometimes afraid. I know that we need one another, that there is strength in religious community, and that progressive religious community is called to be a counter-cultural response to what can seem like the inevitable outcome of society today. We believe in human goodness. It is a radical idea. Our liberal tradition guides us toward liberation because we become more free when we are in this work together, when we promote our values together, when we lead together. I want to invite you to sit with me in reflection on all that Unitarian Universalism is called to be in these days. How are you asked, how are you inspired to live your faith in the world? What does your congregation, this community, 
specialize in? Where is your mission most needed in the surrounding community? And how do we care for one another as we go? Loves, we are called to communal care like never before. We see this in this time when we are re-emerging from the quarantine stage of pandemic. And let me take a moment to say, wow, did we hold one another beautifully and well in these last years. Please let us not lose the lessons we learned about how to hold one another in care, how to protect the health of all, how to center the needs of those most vulnerable among us so that community writ large continues. What have you learned in these recent years? How are you sharing those learnings with other you use and with other members of your community? This is the work of communal care as we steward this faith together. Beloveds, I am grateful for each and every one of you. As I said, I cannot do this work alone. This is work we do together. And I cannot do this remarkable ministry without your phenomenal UUA staff. I want to ask you to treat your leaders, leaders of all kinds, religious professionals, lay leaders, elders, youth, emerging adults, all those who shape us in new ways. Hold your leaders with love. We are all tired. Much is asked of us, and there are wonderful things yet to come. Together, we will reimagine the workings and expressions of this faith, and we will hold on to the traditions and theologies and commitments that have made us who we are. This is beloved community. This is communal care in a season of return. I can't wait to continue this ministry with all of you. Be well, beloved. Don't you just love her? I'm glad she's my president too. So now we are going to ask you in a moment to find a circular table if you're sitting in this row of chairs. Um, the tables which have little yellow placards on them with a value on them, you'll be discussing that value at that table. We're just asking you to pick one value from the graphic on that sheet you got when you came in. Um, and you could pick the table by the value or you could pick it by the people. You could pick as you pick. There are three tables outside. So if going outside would stir your spirit and help your conversation, um, there are three tables out there, and each table should be full. So um, and I know we have a number of new folks, visitors, friends among us. Engage, too. The questions that we're asking you, which are on the tables, which we're asking you to reflect on, are not just for Unitarian Universalists, but for anybody who's engaging these particular values in their lives. So bring your full self to the conversation and, and go. You'll have about 15 minutes. I'll give you... A uh, three minute warning and come around and, and then we'll come back together. Go forth as you will. And if you're joining us at home, there is a, you should see now on your screen, an invitation to reflect or journal on these values where you are. I'll read those out loud in case you can't see the screen right now. Pick a value or two uh, from this list equity, generosity, interdependence, justice pluralism, transformation. I'll read those again after I read the reflection questions, which are, how do you already enact this value in your life? How would this value change your life, our community? How would this value inspire you to lead your faith into the world? So you're reflecting on how you already enact this value, how this would you change your life for our community, and how this value would inspire you to lead your faith into the world. I'll read those values again for you. Equity, generosity, interdependence, justice, pluralism, transformation. I'll give you a three minute warning as well.
If you're here in Goddard, I invite you to finish your sentence. Move back to your chairs if you moved before. Appreciate your circle for the conversation. And we'll make our way back to the seats we started in. Okay, welcome back. If you're on YouTube, thank you for playing along. Had some good conversations? Good. Problem with? Oh, wow. Well. a low murmur now rather than a high murmur now so I will let you know that soon soon an offering will be taken to support the life and work of this congregation as you sit and listen and pass the basket around or text or send some money to the office I ask that you consider two questions, which Jamelia is gonna invite us to give voice to after the offering. So for the introverts, the internal processors among us, we're giving you some thinking time. And at some point in the offering, these questions will also be on the slides in front of you. Both questions consider how you are moving forward with your own discernment around the proposed changes to Article 2. The first question is, what is growing within you that you want to nurture and tend? What is growing within you that you want to nurture and tend? And the second question is, what within you feels closed and hard? What within you feels closed and hard? Your financial gifts and your answers to these questions will be gratefully received.
so you've talked to each other a lot today. You've had a little bit of time to reflect. And now I'd like us to share, because each of our tables had a different value. And so I invite you to think about the question that we just had. What is alive in you that you want to tend and grow around this issue? And what feels closed or a little bit resistant? So we're going to shout them out, and then I'll repeat them. So talk loud. Who's ready? What feels alive in this? Shout it out, Thomas. Telling people about Unitarian Telling people about Unitarian Universalism. So we're out there and spread the good word. Carolyn. Um, and point to people who are really interested in justice work. Justice. Mm -hmm. Expanding our justice work. What else feels alive? Centering love. Centering love. That'd be a great conversation. What do we do with that? How do we do it? What feels closed or hard or difficult right now? Loss of the word peace. Loss of the word peace. Anger about politics. Anger about politics. <laughs> what else? Loss of community. Loss of community. Time and energy. Time and energy. Anything else? Dealing with people who think they're right. <laughs> I'm distracted because we have a, a gaggle entering in. A gaggle of what is good and right and alive in the world. And they're going to find their grown ups. Okay, Bob, say it again loud. The unknown, the unknown, and the unknown that we're leaving to our young people as they walk in with us. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else about these article revisions that feel alive or feel hopeful or that might take us to the future? They just came in. They just came in. Openness to change that attracts young people. Openness to change that attracts young people. Mm -hmm. Pluralism. Pluralism. Mm -hmm. So we know that we have a lot of reactions and feelings. We also have a lot of thoughts. And to that end, we're going to have at least two open discussions um, about these Article Two changes. and. Um, can we put that? I think we have the information. If you're at a table, there's a little half sheet here. And there's some sign-up sheets in the back. Um, these are four session guided small group discussions with me and Reverend Tina. Um, this year, we'll have some more after the new year. Y'all, it's November. It is almost the new year. Um, so we'll have some more next year. So if you want to start talking about Article 2, there's some ways to start thinking about it before we vote again at GA in uh, June of next year. Um, so there's, like I said, handouts on the table, and there's some sign-up sheets in the back um, if you're ready for more discussion. Thank you.
Will you please join me in saying our words of chalice extinguishing? This is, may you be changed by Emily Richards. May you lead this time together changed. May the promises you have made to yourself about who you want to be feel closer to the reality of who you are right now. May you share that feeling of transformation wherever you go. May it spread into every word, deed, thought, and interaction until we are all changed, transformed, and transforming together, becoming our better selves.